This is a video for how to go about creating tough ISOs number four. So when you look at this object, um, the first thing we kind of want to start off on is by creating a shape that is flat on the front that will have these curves that will be extruded back a distance. So if we can look at the full width of the object, notice that this is a radius of 15 from this center point over. So it's going to be 15 plus 30. The object is going to be symmetrical. So 45 plus 45 is going to be 90. So our first thing that we are going to do is to draw for ourselves um, a line that is going to be 45 to the right and 45 to the left. We could also just choose to draw a center point rectangle that is going to be 90 by 6 right here. So as, we, as anytime you look at any one of these drawings, there's multiple ways to get started. There's multiple ways to, to actually complete this. What we're going to choose to do is do a, a center point rectangle. So we're going to go up to the file command. We're going to go to new and let's go to standard IPT and we're going to go to create. And I want to go to my pencil and we're going to click on our XY plane. And let's go to rectangle and I want to go down to a two point center. We're going to click on our origin. And as I drag out, I said that the distance was going to be 90 wide. So we're going to hit 90 and hit tab and hit six and hit enter. And we now have for ourselves a rectangle that goes the full width of the object in this height of six right here. Now what we're wanting to do is from this bottom line down here we want to draw for ourselves two circles. One that has a radius of 12 and one that has a radius of 18. We're going to go from the bottom of our circle. So we're going to go to circle and down at the bottom you're going to see a green dot and as we drag out note that I'm in diameter. I want the radius. I'm going to right click and go down to radius and I want the radius to be 12 here and hit enter. I'm going to go back to that center point again and drag out and we're in radius now and I'm going to go to 18 and I'm going to hit enter. And you're going to notice that we now have almost everything that we need to create this part from the front view because what we're trying to find is we're trying to find this arc right here. So all we have to do is grab the trim command and trim out what we don't need. So we're going to come back here and I'm going to come up and grab trim and we don't need these bottom parts down here. I don't need this thing here in the middle. I'm not going to need this middle part in here or this part here or really even anything that's down in this area over here. Do the same thing on the opposite side here and here and here. We don't need any of this. We're not going to need this part here in the middle. All we really need, I know this is my x-axis. That was the reason why you couldn't tell I wasn't able to delete it. We have this surface in here. So you can, you can ignore the middle line. This is our x-axis. What I do want is just this curvature right in here. That's what I want. So now when I go to finish sketch, you can see the sketch that I saved. You can see that sketch. I want to set this as fit to view. So now we're going to go to extrude and we're going to flip our directions. And let's go back to our drawing here. I'm going to, I don't need that anymore. I'm going to come back to here. The radius is 15. So from here to here is going to be a distance of 30. The radius times 2, we'll put in 30. And we're going to hit enter. So now we have that part. Our next step we want to do is we're going to round off. We could round off these corners or we could draw back here on the back of the object. Notice how we have this uh, plane coming down through the center. We want to make sure that we have a mid plane between two planes while we have a flat surface over here. So let's start doing that. Let's go to plane and go to mid plane between two planes. And I want to go from this surface and we're going to go over to the opposite side. And I want to make sure I have a plane down through the center because that's going to help us a little later. Now we can go up to the fillet command and the fillet radius, remember from our depth was 30, so our fillet radius is going to be 15. Click on that line and click on that line. Same thing here and on the opposite side. We're going to fill it off those edges and we're going to say OK. Note that we're able to round off these edges. Now there's two holes. There's a hole here and a hole on the opposite side. It says two holes with a diameter of 12. We're going to go up to the hole command and we're going to go up to linear and go down to concentric. And the plane we want is this, our concentric reference is here, our diameter is 12. Notice I'm not going to say OK because I still have another hole to put on the opposite side. I guess we could just go ahead and mirror that while I'm thinking about it. So let's just say OK. Let's go up to mirror up here at the top. Let's go over to hole 1. Our mirror plane is work plane 1. Easy enough. Let's say OK. 
mirror it to the opposite side. This is a totally symmetrical object. So that made things pretty easy. We could have just kept in the whole command and come over here and drawn, but we're going to choose not to do that. Our next step is from the center point down here all the way up to here. You're going to notice that here's how we find the center point of this circle. It's going to be 44 up from the very bottom. We're going to go up 44 on the back of the object. So we're going to come back to here and flip around to the back of the object and we're going to grab our pencil. Click on the back surface. Now the point that we want is we're going to go to the line command and we want to reference this right here. So I'm just going to not, I'm not going to click over. I'm going to reference until this black line comes over and hits that Y axis right here. Notice that I'm on negative three millimeters on the Y and I'm at zero on the X. We want to click right here and drag straight up and the distance was 44 and I'm going to hit enter and the line is straight up and 44. Let's go back to here. The diameter of the circle we want to draw that's in the center point here, it's going to be a diameter of 20. We're going to click on circle, top of the circle. I'm going to notice I'm in radius right here. I'm going to right click and go down to diameter. The diameter again was 20. So I'm at 20. I'm going to hit enter. And that's the kind of outside edge of this circle right here. Now what we're trying to do is we're going to try to find the line that comes down like this off the back. So when we go to this object, we're going to click on line. And one of the things I want to do is if I can get a line just kind of off to the side over here, I'm just going to draw a line like this that's diagonal. And we're going to use the tangent constraint. I'm going to say I want this to be tangent to this, and I want that to be tangent to that. And it moved it. Perfect. Now sometimes it would shift this circle over. So one of the things we want to do is we're going to click on the lock constraint and we want to lock this line. I don't want this line to move. It's the spine of the object. I want to lock it in place. I'm going to right click and say OK. We're going to do the same thing with this but on the opposite side. We're going to click on line and we're going to click and just draw a diagonal line like that off the side and grab your tangent constraint. Tangent means to touch at one point without going through. So I want this line to rest up against these sides. I'm going to right click and say OK. Let's grab our trim command. Trim this object and this object. The bottom parts, let's go to undo here. Let's go to undo. It took that away from me. Notice this should be tangent here. It's not coming in tangent the way I want it to. It's saying it already exists. We'll see what happens in a minute. Notice how this isn't touching over here. What we might want to do is redraw the object. So I'm going to right click and say OK. And let's just delete these two lines real quick. Let's just delete them. We can make sure that this touches the edge because when I look at the object down here, it looks like this touches right here at the edge. So I'm, this line is constant right here. So when I'm noticing there is a gap down there, I want to make sure I don't do anything wrong. So we'll make this a little bit easier. Let's go to pencil and let's click on the corner down here when it turns green. And I'm going to drag straight up and click. Now we're going to use the tangent constraint. Tangent here to here. We'll keep that there. We're going to go to line, click down here. We could also just come right up here until we see tangent, but I like to just drag off the object and use the tangent constraint. Tangent here to here. And right click and say OK. Now I'm going to grab trim. Trim that off. Trim that off. I want to trim the inside part of the circle off as well. I'm going to right click and say OK. Let's go to finish sketch. Click on the house button. We're going to extrude this part out a distance of six. I believe that says six. Yeah, it says six. It kind of looks like a five a little bit. It's kind of tough to see sometimes. We're going to go to extrude, click inside this object, flip the directions. We're going to put in six. We're going to hit enter. And you now have that backboard base of the object. Note how we had to find the top spine of it up to the center. We drew that circle and we were able to use some geometric construction to do that. So the next thing we need to do is we need to draw for ourselves a cylinder that's going to hit the outside um, diameter of this. The diameter is still going to be 20, but we're going to extrude it out a distance of 12. We're going to extrude it out a distance of 11. 17 minus 6 is going to be 11. So we're going to come back to here and let's use those primitives again. We're going to go to cylinder up here at the top. I'm going to click here. I'm not going to click out here. I'm just going to reference it. I'm going to click on my center point and I'm going to snap right over here. It says 20. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to put in 11 and hit enter. And we now have this little part coming out. Notice we have ourselves another hole that's a diameter of 12. We're going to click here. Go up to the hole command where it says linear. We go to concentric. We're going to click on this plane. Click on the outside circle right here, which is going to make it concentric. Our diameter is 12. Notice how perfectly that placed that in the center with the concentric reference. Say OK. Click on your house button. We now have this part done. Our next thing we need to do is to create this kind of backbone rib part right in here again. So we are going to go to our pencil and we're going to come out here and click on work plane one. 
we're going to right click in our graphics area, go to slice graphics. We're going to right click and, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. We're going to go to project geometry and go down to project cut edges because we need to reference these points in here. Go to your line command and we are going to draw a diagonal line. Let's right click and say OK and go to finish sketch. And let's see if it references this surface in here without us drawing the lines and it does. Sometimes you have to draw those lines over the top. We want to click right here in the middle and go to a symmetrical extrusion. The gap right here is going to be a distance of 6. Highlight right in here, 11. We change that to a 6. We're going to hit Enter. So once again, like in the previous video, you can kind of see this little ledge right here. We're going to go to our pencil. We're going to click on this ledge in the middle. Let's click on our house button so we can kind of zoom in down here. And we're going to go up to Project Geometry and click on this surface. And notice how it gave it to us on both sides. It's going to say it already exists. Let's go to Finish Sketch. Let's go to Extrude. We're going to click inside both of these. You have to go to both sides. It says Distance. Go to Two Next. And then we'll wrap this into the side. If you see how it's going to work, you can see it's going to create and add this mass into the object. It's going to force that to come right up into the curve. Say OK. And you now have that continuous shape going right up into that cylinder. So we're going to right click on work plane one in our browser bar and remove the visibility. And this has been the video for how to create tough ISOs number four. Um, a lot of skill building, um, some geometric construction involved, but really once you uh, get the basic dimensions down, reasonably doable objects. So this has been a video for how to create tough ISOs number four.